Two years ago, I spent my nights doing one thing, pacing up back and forth on the floor of my house, almost wearing a hole in it, debating on how I could end everything, how it could all be over, all this pain and suffering that I was dealing with, coming up with ways and visualizing ways that I can make that happen, and actually making it look like an accident even, if I could. It was a horrible time in my life, and the answer that I was looking for, the solution to my pain and suffering, was the last thing on my list, is what I would like to say. What I'd like to say is this, it wasn't even on my list. It was probably the farthest thing from any list that I could ever conceive would be the answer to my, the solution to my problem. How did I ever get to this place? It didn't make any sense to me. I had spent my life, you know, becoming who I was, and I thought all through me. I did this. I had, I didn't make any sense that I was in this place. Um, I had a beautiful wife, a beautiful family, um, a successful business. I'd taken my business from, uh, I'm a photographer, and I started my business uh, by the penitentiary. Everybody says location, location, location. <laughs> Doing a lot of portraits of uh, people in jumpsuits needing passports. But it got my business started. Kidding, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, And the other half of my business was uh, a carpentry shop. So you can imagine people with their small children coming to my business in the evenings, dark, by the penitentiary, and hearing in the background of a chainsaw. It was a great way to start my business. So well, I grew my business from that to um, to what I thought was visualizing what every, to have everything that you would ever want as a business person, of having a historic building downtown. Um, my image was featured in national publications. At one time, Canada had selected me as one of the top 78 photographers or most influential photographers in the country. Um, I was the president of the top 25 photographers um, in uh, uh, most kind of the influential photographers around the world. Um, so I had everything going for me. Why was my life a mess? I'd done all these things, or so I thought I did, and my life was a mess. I was in pain and anxiety. My days were filled with, um, I would walk, my business, I would hide in my stairwells. I'm ashamed to tell you all these things in my life or what it was like, but I didn't understand that I had achieved all this success, and yet I was filled with fear and pain and anxiety, and, and it was all crumbling underneath me, and I couldn't understand the reason. And um, I, police cars would drive by, and I thought they were coming to arrest me. I have no idea why, but I was going to be there. Uh, the news would come on, and I would think, I'm going to be on it. And they're going to talk about me and about what a horrible person I am. I have no idea why. But all of these things, so what do I do? What do I do? So I pray. And I spend every morning, every morning I go into work very early, because I wasn't sleeping anyway. So I go into work every morning and pray. I would read a devotional. Um, this is the one that I read, Jesus Calling, and then I would read the devotional, I would pray about it, and then I would be, I would, um, be very silent to listen. My prayer was, give me peace. I need peace in my life. And I prayed every day, fervently, sweating, on my knees. I heard nothing. It was silence. I was like, there's got to be like a, a poster that I can hang in my office, it will shake me out of this. Some kitty hanging on a pole, maybe? Hang on to Friday's coming, maybe that'll do it. Maybe that'll kick me out of this. What, what was it gonna be? A song, a verse, uh, Christian music. What was it that was gonna shake me out of this? Um, was it science? So I read books on science about how your brain operates and chemicals and reactions and all of that. It's gotta be something. Something physical, maybe, is what the problem is. What can it be? What is the solution to this? I looked for every solution there was. Nothing um, for over a year. And I was praying and praying and praying. And one morning, I hear this voice, just this little whisper that says, There'll be, you'll find truth and peace in the Catholic Church. I'm like, wrong answer. I not, I, you understand, I'm spending, I'm spending a year looking for an answer, and this is what you're going to tell me? That I'm going to find truth and peace in the Catholic Church? 
I don't believe that. I've been going to the Catholic Church for 25 years, really never missing Mass, but I was there as a critic and a cynic. I was not there to attend to learn. I knew more, or I thought I did, obviously. I thought I knew more. I thought I knew more what God wanted, what he expected, that the things of the Catholic Church were just things that were distractions. They weren't getting you they weren't driving me closer to him. They were, dri they, were, they were just distractions and pulling me away from really having a great relationship with Christ. So I didn't understand this. It didn't make any sense to me. And so I questioned it. But honestly, I tried everything else. So there wasn't anything left. So I decided, I'll listen. I'll go down this path. But I don't think it's going to lead anywhere. So I start calling around to churches and saying, well, when's your next RCIA class? And they're like, well, in about five or six months. I'm like, see, I told you, this isn't the right answer. There's no RCI classes starting. I can't be doing this now. So um, but I'm like, all right, well, maybe I'll just study on my own. I'll start reading and listening. And um, I got a link to form.org from, from the church. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll just check this out and see what's going on. Well, I did. And I started reading which I don't read. I never was disciplined before this. I never read, I never studied, I never prayed every morning before this pain and suffering entered my life. None of that. Um, so I started reading, and I started listening, and I started opening my heart. And what I heard was truth. And I never asked for truth. That was not what I was looking for. But God knew something that I didn't know. He knew that through truth of the Catholic Church, there truly is peace. You know, um, a kitty poster, um, nothing wrong with Tony Robbins or a motivational speaker, but they do not have the depth and the truth and the knowledge that is long lasting that will give you peace, deep understanding peace that the Catholic Church will. And I started learning that. I started understanding that these things, these things called the saints, that were, I thought were distractions, but their lives were a mess, which I didn't realize. I thought they were just these perfect people. That the, like St. John Bosco was a perfect person, and the church revered and loved him all of his life. It wasn't true. He was, he was shunned. He was turned away. And it wasn't until later, till the Catholic Church realized how powerful and all the things that he was doing. He was on a mission. I was, I was blown away, and I was starting to fall in love with the Catholic Church. I'm like, how can, I, how can this be? How can I take something that I despised and now be in love with it? This can't be from me. I, I alone cannot do this. This has to be from him. Only he can turn our hearts from that dramatically in our lives. So um, I even would do things as like uh, sit in the Catholic Church and go, okay, I know if I'm, uh, if, if I'm against it too much, God's going to work on me. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be lukewarm, and maybe he'll just leave me alone, because I know I'm right about this Catholic Church thing. Uh, and obviously that didn't work either So um, to do that. So I went through that, and, um, and all of a sudden this just flood of truths start coming to me and start being revealed to me. I can't get enough at this point. I'm now spending about three hours a day in faith formation, absolutely enchanted with the, and um, excited about all the Catholic Church has to offer, all the truths that are happening, all the things that are being revealed to me, all the peace that's coming in my life now as a result of that also. Um, so what do I do? I've, it's, you know, RCI classes haven't started yet, but I'm starting to, like, have all these weird, strange things going on in my life. I can't tell my wife. I can't tell my family because they all know how I feel. So I have to keep this a secret. I'm trying to keep all of this a secret, but I just can't hold it in. So, um, so I start, so RCI classes start, and I start sneaking into RCIA and not letting my family know. <laughs> so... Um, I quietly sneak into RCIA, and I'm, I was raised Baptist, so I'm thinking, okay, no big deal. A uh, couple classes, boom, I'm a Catholic. Okay, not a big deal. Okay, so I don't know anything, obviously, about how any of, any of this works. So um, they're like, they hand out the course guide, and they're like, okay, well, you're going to be here for a while. I'm like, oh, I can't. I've got to sneak away all these times, like every week for months and months. This is going to be really tough. 
But I did it, and um, I went in um, to RCIA. And as Ellen can tell you, Ellen Bauman can tell you, that within two weeks or three weeks of RCIA, I had completely read everything, watched every video, completed out every form um, that was needed for the next six months. I was so excited, I couldn't get enough. I wanna know everything there was. I would read and review. But does that mean that overnight, that I all the things that I thought and all the conception, misconceptions that I had, I just completely just um, changed my mind? No, it wasn't that easy, of course. So there were many things I had issues with in the Catholic Church. So, um, uh, uh, so what? So I was like, but, but this has to be real. I heard this voice. There's truth in this. So. I decided to study that topic. For example, like take purgatory. I'm like, well, that's an issue. I'm not sure if I understand how that all works and if that's real, if that's, if that's true. So I started studying and reading and educating myself and taking both, looking at both sides of the issue and praying about it and finding out the more knowledge and the more education and the more um, was revealed to me that there is truth there. In fact, there's truth in all of it. There's truth in all the things of the Catholic Church, that, that all of it is true. And not just pieces of it, but every piece of it's true. And with, with more time, with opening your heart, with listening, with educating, you will find the same thing, that all of the, all of the things are truths. Don't think just because you question something in the Catholic Church or a piece of it that, oh my goodness, there's something wrong there, I need to walk away, because it's not that. Maybe that question was planted in your heart or in your mind for a reason to, to question. And go ahead and follow down that path and see where it leads. Don't just walk away from it, but, but walk into it and learn about it and, and discover and open your heart. And that's what I did. And I was amazed at all the things that I was learning. So... <clears throat> Well, how do you do that, you know? So I started studying the saints and all of that, and um, one of the things that, um, that uh, this RCI class of St. Lambert's did that they've never done in the past before, which I was pretty darn excited about, not, was they decided to do a rite of Christian initiation ceremony, which means now me, the guy that says I'm never gonna become Catholic, has to go up in front of the Catholic Church with my sponsor, full service or whatever, and stand up there and turn around and say to everybody, yes, I'm planning on becoming a Catholic. Thinking, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. Maybe I was crazy. Maybe I was delusional. Maybe I was desperate. Maybe all the things that have been happening to me are just nuts. So I'm walking up there. I'm sitting down. Ellen is next to me. And someone is also on my other side. I'm thinking, how do I get out of this? I'm now up in the front of the church. How do I? This is crazy. So I'm praying as hard as I can. How do I get out? How do I get out? How do I get out of this? And, um, and so my eyes are closed. I'm firmly praying and I'm um, thinking, this is, this is wrong. I'm not, I'm, this can't be right. This can't be right. Me, why am I here? And, um, and uh, um, as I open my eyes, I look up at the front of the church and I hear a voice that says, I will show you. It has all the saints and the things that are happening in front of the church that I don't quite understand at this point what they all mean and says, I will show you how all of these things will lead you to the feet of, my, of the cross. I'm like, okay, I'll just go with that. So I decided I will go ahead and finish this and go through with, with, um, with the, uh, the RCIA classes. And so as I studied and I learned and my faith and um, became deeper and I was so excited and I was falling in love with the Catholic Church and all I had to do, my relationship with Christ obviously was stronger. There was peace coming into my life finally. I began to smile and began to, uh, a lot of things changed for me. Um, I asked the question many times of, of this. So it's, you, you want an answer, right? You pray to God. I feel like my conversation with you is almost a continuation of Father's homily this morning, which is a little bizarre because, um, you know, I was like shaking and nervous and worried and all of this. And then I hear Father's homily and I'm like, oh, yeah, well, that's exactly my life, which is having spent all this time and deep 
you know, prayer and, and time and, and, um, and almost going through these fires, you know, of purification is a way I look at it, is that not only of, you know, spending every day in devotion and time and study and prayer, but also this fire of purification um, at the same time. As painful as it was, it was what I needed and what he needed I needed to do. So I asked the question, well, why me? I'm certainly not deserving of any answer, that's for sure. Um, I'm the last guy that should get an answer to this question. Um, I was now asking, my prayer was now this. I wrote this down. I wrote every day. I journaled everything every day. And um, I said this, and this is, you know, all these things are never things that I would ever do. I said, my prayer was, reveal yourself to those who are more deserving. They're more spiritual, more devoted to you. Not just the suffering and not just those who have grown apart from you, but from those that are devoted to you. Reveal yourself to them. Now, what am I supposed to do with this information and knowledge? Um, I felt guilt and pressure. What do I do? Show me. Show me what I do. I've decided that, you know, everything's in his timing. That as much as I want to do something and push and, and um, have him revealed, that, it's, that I need to let him decide what that is and what I need to do. So obviously I tell my story whenever I get the chance, whenever the opportunity arises. But um, it's his story, not mine of course. And, um, and so I, I need to talk, this is a businessman's fraternity, I want to talk about how this has also changed my business, how this has changed my personal life, and some of my reflections on all of this. So um, I feel like in retrospective, when I look back on this, that this was a, um, the whis this was whispers of a culmination of a lot of whispers in my life. It wasn't just one moment but it was hundreds of moments and hundreds of whispers that were happening in my life. It was um, Father Rutten's homilies and how he was um, seeing Christ in others. It was Father Mason's intellect. It was the guy that we had covered in tattoos sitting in the pew next to me thinking, this is odd, shaking my world. The little old lady that spent every day in prayer, um, Miles Beacom. Tapping me on the shoulder every morning when I came, you know, every Sunday in church as you rounded the corner, me in the back row thinking, why am I here? <laughs> um, the family around me um, who always showed pr prayer and Christ in their lives. So many people, there's many people in this room also um, that showed me Christ through, through their whispers, through their examples. My family, God understood that I needed these things and I needed discipline and I needed truth. And so... Um, I see life a lot differently now because of this. In some ways, I kind of see it like um, there's a scene in a movie called The Shack that um, this guy's walking through this just uh, maze, a mess. It is um, uh, full of thickets, full of thorns, and nothing makes sense. As he's walking through this place, he's asked, what do you think of this? He said, it's, it's a horrible place. It makes no sense. It's, it's harmful. There's dangerous things here and there's dangerous things there. There's no straight paths. There's nothing. You know, you're walking through all of this. And as the camera pans up above him, you see that it's perfectly ordered. It's perfectly beautiful. Everything has a pattern to it. And I think that's how God sees our lives, is that we walk through it, and we, what we see from our perspective is only the pain and the things and the, the chaos and the whatever. But as he sees it, there's a perfect order to it, that he has a plan for everything, that um, 25 years of sitting in the Catholic Mass thinking, this isn't for me, it took me that long. It was, I'm that stubborn. But... Maybe there is a plan in all of that because I have guilt that I, I wish that now that I, you know, maybe a year of that would have been fine. You know, in 20 years, I could have had more information and I could have been more in, in, in touch with Christ and, and have all these great connections and understand that all these things 
all these beautiful things of the Catholic Church, how they draw us closer to him. And I just can't get enough of it. I'm so excited to learn about everything and bring them in and, and to learn more about it. So I become more empathetic to others that I see that are um, in, in distress or in pain. Before this, I was like, you know what? Pick yourself up. Self-talk yourself out of this. That's what I do. I just self-talk myself out of it, and I can do it. You can do the same thing. Obviously, I have learned a lesson. You can't just self-talk your way out of it. That sometimes it's bigger than you, and that, that, that you need something more than that, which is God, of course. To be more present and aware of him um, in our lives is the other thing that I've seen happening in my life. Um, and just listening for his voice at all times, not in just the good, not in just the beautiful things, but in all the things. Look for Christ and see where he's at in your life and how, how that can affect you. Um, I found that fear is a lie and that um, whenever we have fear in our life, that it's a lie. And it's to keep us from spreading the word of God and to talk about him. That is, that is um, uh, Satan's way of keeping us from um, being excited and talking about God. Suffering is God's way of being close to him um, and uh, focus on, I've decided to take my focus away from the earthly things and on more in heaven things. So how is my difference, how's my business any different, right? Um, because of all of this. So everything trickles into something else and infiltrates our lives. So I've definitely noticed a big impact in my business. Instead of striving, striving to be on top, it's more about honoring the ones that I work with instead now. Instead of about me, it's about the people that I work with, um, the people that I photograph. Um, recognizing the amazing things that they're doing and telling their story. So our business used to be focused on purely the external beauty. And now it's focused on the internal beauty of people. And so one of the campaigns we ran with our high school seniors was we called them inf positive influencers. And so we celebrated and told their stories about the positive influences they make in the community. So we would ask them, what do you do to give back to the community? And they would tell these beautiful stories about how they would work with handicapped children or this one um, person every week went to the nursing home and spent time with this elderly man. And so we told their stories in social media and celebrated that instead of just celebrating the external beauty of others. I think it's, you know, one of the, our uh, businessmen fraternity meetings was great. It was about combining our passion with a purpose. And I see that happening is that if you can find that passion and combine it with your pur purpose, um, of, of how much of an impact that can have in your business. The other thing that, that is kind of, you know, this is just a side note, but also like I'm downtown, so I have a lot of homeless people um, on my property, of course, you know, like, you know, have to come to it in the mornings or whatever and so forth. And I used to just kind of be mean to them. This is true. So, and I would yell at them and say, you need to leave right now and off to my property because it't scares people. You know, my clients, it scares them. My business, the other people that are in my people or whatever, you know, you need to leave, you need to get out of this property. Um, so, um, so I'm, uh, I see them as people and see that, that they have issues too and have empathy for them. The last homeless people person that was in my business um, was there, um, was, you know, I don't know, I just saw, saw him through different eyes and that, um, that there's Christ there too. And that he was all curled up in a blanket and, and cold. And um, I told him that, you know, that, that you need to find a better place than this. And I brought him a hot coffee. I gave him some words of encouragement and, um, and uh, helped him along his way. Um, uh, my daughter that struggles with depression and anxiety sometimes, I, I'm able to tell my story and help her through that. And um, I'm beginning to see a project happening as a result of this. I'm calling it the truth in Peace Project, where I am um, photographing um, different subjects that tell the truth of the Catholic Church and, um, and planning on putting all these pieces together um, to subtly tell the story and the truths that are in the Catholic Church. All the things that many of us see as distractions, I now see as truths as ways of drawing us closer to him, of ways of, um, 
of, as, as examples of our lives, of how we can be closer to him. So I want you to be the whisper to others, as you've been the whisper to me, and work, work through you. Listen for the opportunities, and let him work through you, and then go and pray. Let it go. My prayer is if you're suffering, that you may find peace and truth in the Catholic Church. I thank you for speaking to me and being the whisper to me and to others. Thank you.